Carcassi study number two is one of my favorite etudes, both for practicing and for teaching. After watching that performance, you probably think I need to practice it more. Yeah, I probably do. Nonetheless, there's a lot to be gained by practicing this study, and I'd like to talk about some of the things that I work on for my own playing and for my teaching. First, let's approach the idea of playing it as a chord study. Initially, I'd like you to think of the right hand part of playing the chords. Some people struggle to play a really controlled chord. And what, what I'd like you to think of doing is practicing where you play the chord and you follow through all the way into the palm of your hand like this. In fact, one of my favorite exercises prior to practicing chords like this is just to practice clapping, one hand clapping. If you do this motion where you clap and you get a nice crisp sound, you're basically doing the perfect chord movement. So here what I'm doing is I'm finishing up with my fingers flat against the palm and when I play the chord, I'm going to do the same thing. Now you don't want to be squeezing hard. I like to tell people, imagine that you caught a ladybug or some beautiful insect in your hand and you wanted to put it outside. You would have your hand closed like this but not, not squeezing hard. So that's how I want you to finish. What I'd like you to do before we even start with the piece is to touch your fingers to the chord, to the strings, play the chord, hold it, feel the natural tension in your right forearm, and then release. Do that a few times. Release. Hold. Release. And then let's proceed to add the left hand. So once you've done uh, some right hand chords, it's time to add the left hand. What I want you to focus on is making sure that your shifts are level. When I say shifting level, I want you to make sure that your hand moves smoothly when you have fingers on the same strings. If you move your hand this way, that's out of level. So on the first five chords, for example, I want you to be very aware of making sure that the palm of your hand stays at the same level with respect to the distance to the fingerboard. So watch me play the first five chords. What is most common a problem is when you go to the half bar, people will crunch up and push up on their left hand. And you want to avoid doing that. On a basic level, if I play one, two, three, four on the fourth, on the third string, and then I go into a half bar, there shouldn't be any hand position change. I should basically get the half bar just by compressing my index finger right here. The next thing that I want you to work on is practicing releasing your left hand and your right hand at the end of each chord so that when you move to the next shape, your fingers do so but without lifting off of the strings. So what I want you to avoid is this, where you play a chord and then you lift up, put down, lift up, put down. That's very inefficient. What I want you to work on is making sure that when you play the chord, you relax your hand with your fingers still touching. You move, play, move, play, move, play, relax and move, play. By doing that, your movements from one chord to the next will be extremely efficient and they'll be smooth and your hand will stay relaxed. Another exercise that you can try with this is to play what I call pure movement, and that is to go through the chord changes without squeezing your left hand. In this case, what I'll do is... Of course, it sounds very funny, but that's the pure movement of one chord moving to the next without any tension. Then all you simply do is drop the weight of your left arm a little bit on each chord and you'll get nice smooth movement. 
from one chord to the next. With regards to the right hand, there's a number of fingerings that you can try with this etude. Uh, perhaps the original fingering that Carcassi intended was P I M A M A M A. In the original score uh, or original publication, he does not indicate a right hand fingering. So it's up to you to decide which one you want to do. Um, another fingering that is really a, a good one to practice is P I M A M I M I. The one that I used in the performance earlier is P I M A M I M A. What I'm focusing on when I do these uh, different patterns is I'm focusing on the pivoting of my elbow. And basically, I want to have crisp pivots with each string change uh, where my index finger moves from one string to another. If I do the original Carcassi fingering, what I think was his fingering, P-I-M-A-M-A-M-A, -M -A -M -A, I'm only going to have the equivalent of one string pivot. So I'm going to go P-I-M-A-M-A-M-A, P-I-M-A-M-A-M-A. If I do P-I-M-A-M-I-M-I, -I -I, I'm going to have uh, two strings pivot. So I'm going to go P I M A M I M I. Now I'm going to pivot with my index finger all the way up to the first string. So again, P I M A M I M I. Then if you do the fingering that I played, uh, you can have a continuous pivot up and down. So I'll go P I M A M I M A. P -I What's important to have good pivoting with your elbow, you have to have nice relaxed biceps and tricep muscles that are working uh, nicely with each other. So that's uh, probably the most important aspect of the right hand in my opinion. One detail that I'd like you to pay attention to if you do the P-I-M-A-M-A-M-A -M -A -M -A arpeggio pattern is that I'd like you to work on having your pinky move in conjunction with your A finger and your I finger work in conjunction with your M finger. So what I'd like you to work on is having those two fingers work together and these two in this fashion. You definitely want to avoid any situation where your index finger does something like this, where it's lifting up or even worse is where your small finger, your pinky, pulls into the palm of your hand. Both of those are serious problems that should be avoided. In addition, practicing this piece as a tremolo study is excellent. A lot of books recommend this and I think it's an excellent uh, idea. In this case, what you'll do is play your thumb on the fifth, third, second, third while you do the tremolo. Let me play a little bit of this for you. practice tremolo AMI and then one day I experimented and found that IMA worked much better for me. My arm feels a lot more relaxed and it feels more controlled, the speed is better and so on. When I teach students tremolo I usually offer AMI, the traditional pattern, first and see how they go. If I notice that they're struggling with that I might suggest IMA, MIMI or AIM. All those tremolo patterns are perfectly legitimate. You should find out which one works for you and that's the choice that you should make. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a pleasure to work with you.